I'm Stefan Struve and you're watching Dutch Fight Network. So we're here with Stefan the Skyscraper Struve. First off, how are you doing, man? I'm good. Um, I'm happy. Uh, fight's almost here. Wade's almost over. So it's always good. I'm, you know, I'm excited to perform again for my crowd. Um, yeah, it's great. Uh, we followed you around on uh, UC Media Day a couple of months ago. Uh, have you been in Holland since then? No, no. I went back to Florida for the five, uh, last five weeks of my training camp. Uh, to f finish it up, so it was a nice little break to be in Holland and do uh, the media and all that. But um, you know, I really get the best training done in Florida. I can really focus on myself there. I don't have to worry about anybody else, so it's great. How long have you been here now? Uh, I came back Saturday, so I'm fully climat uh, climatized. I'm on on my type zone, time zone again. Um, everything's good. So. Yeah, some kind of ritual when you come back uh, to the Netherlands, like go and eat uh, somewhere, see some people. Uh, yeah, no, I go to my to my family, um, go eat with my mom, um, go see my brother and his kids. Um, yeah, just relax, you know. So just uh, get that um, familiar feeling from home. Um, yeah, just feeling like like home. That really, you know, takes away the um, uh, fight week jitters a little bit. So it's good. Lately, you've been pretty vocal about pet juice, steroid juice. Uh, can you elaborate on that, why you chose to speak up right now? I think it's really important that every single clean athlete in the sport steps up and speaks out against it and do it more and more. You know, when I came up and when I started this sport, uh, I kind of accepted it to be part of it because there were no real tests. And you know, especially in Japan, they, they never tested for it. You know, they, they encouraged you to take it because they wanted the biggest guys. But if you want this sport to be taken seriously and if you want this sport to be clean, and you see with so many guys who are high up in the rankings or not high up in the rankings anymore and, or not performing, you know, this, this sport needs to have a level playing field. And there are so many cheaters in this sport still, you know, and I really hope they all get caught and all get, you know, banned from this sport. So... Um, you know, with, with sports, you don't hit, um, you know, with, with this sport, you don't hit a baseball further out of the arena. You don't kick a ball harder. You don't run a lap faster. You don't swim harder. No, you are able to do more physical harm to your opponent. This already is one of the most dangerous sports in the world. So if you want this sport taken seriously and, um, you know, let's let's try to not get someone killed in there by a guy who was on pads. Because if, if that happens, imagine that. That'd be horrible. But, you know, the guys who cheat take away from your health, from your money, from your fame, and from your recognition. So, You already uh, have a win over champion Stipe Miocic. Where do you feel with a win on Saturday that, you, that you'll stand uh, among title contenders? The, the division's right open, in my opinion. Um, there's no clear challenger right now. Um, the storyline's there, there. The other high-ranked guys have fought him or, um, you know, have been out for a long time, like Kane. And Kane's last win was against Travis Brown, who's, you know, a glimpse of him, his former self. So mm -hmm. you want to give him a title shot because of that? Or, you know, what, what are you going to do? There's no real clear challenger. So if I finish this fight and make it look good this Saturday, then you could be right there, you know? You going to take the mic after the fight and ask for this? Um, well, first I need to finish this guy. So let's, you know, let's leave the mic alone for a little bit and get in the cage and finish this guy. So, your other fight, other two fights in the Hoy, they lasted like 31 seconds combined. Yeah. Um, you plan on making a fast finish this time again? Uh, you, you never know what you get. I have the skills to finish this fight uh, within 20 seconds too. But you know, he's a really good fighter. Um, and um, it's, it's not always as easy to land a submission or a punch that fast. So we'll see what we get. He's going to be moving away tactical or he's going to start real aggressive. I'm ready for both. So we'll see what's happening. And um, yeah, the, the finish is going to be there anyway at some point. You know, at some point he will break and I will either knock him out or choke him out. Normally you tower over everybody in the octagon. Now he's, you're still bigger, okay, but this is big opponent. Does this change anything in your approach? Uh, no, you know, um, my, one of my main sparring partners is 6'9". Um, I've always trained with top people here in Holland, too. Um, for me, it's it's very normal. You know, it's for him, he had to fly in people uh, to, to replicate that and give him a little bit of a feeling for that. Um, for me, it's everyday life, so. Are you, in the past, you had some few injuries. How's your body feeling now, man? Everything's good. You know, I went to Florida and took real good care of my shoulder before that. Um, not only my shoulder, but I trained my body to be ready to jump in training camp and jump into sparring. Uh, I was doing pads, running uh, later on and early on after the surgery. I was doing a lot of strength work. So body's ready. Bo body's feeling great. I, um, I trimmed some body fat um, and actually gained some, some more muscle. But I'm lighter now than I was in my last two fights. 
Uh, I'm light, I'm fast, and I'm ready to put this guy away. So.